Paul, we're at the FQXI conference. Normally we deal with very fundamental things in physics and cosmology, time, information, multiverse. Uh, this time we're branching out a little bit. We're talking about science and society, what the future is. How do you see the relationship between fundamental questions in physics and cosmology and even consciousness uh, with uh, the, the, the real world of what humanity is becoming and will be coming and, and, and take a long time horizon, you know, not just a few decades, but a hundred years, a thousand years, a million years? Uh, people like me are interested in these foundational questions in science. Uh, and you, you might say, well, why does society pay for this? And I've been quoting John Wheeler a lot. I can remember him once saying to me, you know, what are you working on? And that's all fantastic. And then he turned and he said, I don't know why society is prepared to support people like us who <laughs> investigate these uh, deep uh, issues. But so long as they do, we've got to hang in there uh, and get these results. And so uh, it, it is amazing, but in my view, important uh, that society does allocate some small fraction of resources to addressing these really fundamental questions, because I place them on the same footing as, uh, as religious questions, uh, and they overlap a lot. Uh, you might say, well, you know, why uh, does society allocate all these resources for build churches and um, <laughs> and temples and so on? They, what does that do for the GDP? You know, isn't this just u using time, valuable time and resources uh, to something that's completely irrelevant to the economy? Um, but nevertheless, they, it fulfills a human need to try to understand uh, what their place is in the great scheme of things and to look beyond and... Uh, uh, to, to try to have some uh, appreciation of a reality that is beyond the, just the, the, the daily round. And these deep questions in science, I think uh, we do them for the same reasons. We'd like to know how the universe is put together and what our place is in that. And I'm, I'm sure that quest will continue because we haven't got there yet. We haven't solved all the problems. We solve one problem and another uh, pops up. Uh, during my career, we've made enormous progress and uh, it's easy to in enumerate the the sort of things that have been discovered and just in the last year, gravitational waves, the Higgs boson, mm -hmm. uh, the, these uh, well-known discoveries. But we, we go on asking uh, more and more questions. Uh, and will we still be doing this in a thousand years, 10,000 years? Uh, I, I think that there is a problem that troubles me. Uh, and one is that um, if every time we answer a question, another one just pops up to replace it, there will probably come a time when society will think, well, these scientists, uh, you know, it's a bottomless pit, uh, <laughs> and they're never going to sort of finally get there and give us this ultimate theory of everything. On the other hand, if they do get there and we have an ultimate theory of everything, then the, the, the job is over. Uh, and so um, there has been a golden age. Uh, Feynman commented on this, that uh, we, we've had these... Uh, uh, many, many discoveries which have been uh, changed our worldview but also changed society and has led to technological innovations. We can't go on piling up those discoveries at the same pace forever and ever. It's going to tail off at some stage. And I don't know when. And you say a thousand years in the future. I don't know whether by, by then we'll have run out of steam or run out of problems or answered all the problems. Uh, but probably this thing we call science will be replaced by something a bit different, a different, different mode of thought. Uh, and, and part of that is surely that we're going to be accompanied in this quest by what some people call artificial intelligence. I think we lack the, the term to describe designed uh, intellectual systems. And at that final time, that asymptote of, of knowledge and science, uh, will we feel confident that we describe all the fundamental issues of why the universe exists and why is there anything at all or where the laws of physics come from or what's the nature of our own consciousness? Yeah, there'll be different uh, criteria. Different people will have different uh, levels of satisfaction. There will always be philosophers. Uh, that are unsatisfied. <laughs> who, who, that's right, who will pull apart our, our wonderful theories and explanations and say, well, this wasn't defined and that doesn't mean anything, and, and so on. So I suspect there will always be people that will extol the mystery. And so do you think there will ultimate, there, there is an ultimate mystery? Do you think there's an ultimate mystery? Uh, I, 
I've written with, um, over the years with great confidence that uh, in principle we could come to understand everything about existence. But I have to say that probably in the last 10 years I have come around to think that, that that is an unachievable goal, probably even in principle, that there, there will always be uh, somehow a, a mystery at the end of the universe.